Good morning. Welcome to our uh, Sunday morning Bible study. For those who are following along this quarter, we have three three speakers. Is that better? <laughs> we have three speakers this quarter. Uh, James Harris started out, uh, then myself, and then after I do uh, three more lessons, including today. Uh, Robert Chase will be uh, bringing our lessons uh, for the rest of the quarter. <clears throat> uh, last fall, you may recall that I taught a series of lessons on Wednesday night called Cultural Insights to the Teachings of Jesus. We're continuing some of those thoughts today. Um, last week, if you were here, you recall that we talked or began talking about the feasts and the festivals found in the Old Testament book of Leviticus. Many people in the Bible were farmers or lived off the produce of the land. And so many people were controlled by the agricultural calendar and the seasons. The lives of people in the biblical world, including Jesus, were in many ways controlled by the calendar. And the Jewish calendar will give us insight into the life of Jesus' ministry. The feasts and the festivals God directed the Israelites to celebrate were a large part of their culture and their heritage. In Exodus chapter 12, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. So the Israelites were coming out of bondage, and they were starting a new life. And so since you're starting a new life and a new land, God said, you're going to also start a new year. This month is to be the first month, the first month of your year. The first month was named Nisan. You can see that on the board behind me, which is, in, is springtime in Israel. As we look at the calendar, we see the month of Nisan falls between about the middle of March and the middle of April on our calendar. <clears throat> but why should we care? What's the interest here for us as New Testament Christians spending time studying these old festivals? What is the value in studying these? Because all these festivals and feasts, even though they were set up in Old Testament times, centered around the Messiah, the Christ. Understanding the festivals are key to understanding what God was teaching about the coming of Jesus. We read in Colossians 2, 16 and 17, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things that were to come, the reality, the reality, however, is found in Christ. So what does this mean? These festivals, these feasts are what? They are a shadow of the picture of Jesus. Jesus is the reality. If you want to understand Jesus' life, if you want to understand Jesus' ministry, look at the festivals. The festivals that God set up were for a purpose. Not only did they pass on the heritage and history of the Jews, they were training the people for certain concepts that would be fulfilled in the reality of the person, Jesus. We talked about this last week, that when we walk outside on a sunny afternoon, we see a shadow, a shadow of a person. That shadow tells us something about that person. So the festivals being a shadow of Christ tells us something about Jesus his doctrine, his redemption. We just need to examine them closely to see what they mean in relationship to Jesus. <clears throat> now, there are two different ways that people over time have characterized these festivals. The first way is what we call the pilgrim festivals. These were th there were three of them, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. They were called the pilgrim festivals because in Deuteronomy 16, 16, it says this, Three times a year 
all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in portion the way the Lord your God has blessed you. So, three times a year, three times a year, all your men shall travel to Jerusalem to celebrate these festivals. Now, there's another way people study these festivals, and that is what time of year they occur, spring festivals and fall festivals. So we see the spring festivals here, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Festivals of Weeks or Pentecost, and the fall festivals, Trumpets, Tabernacles, Atonement, and Hanukkah. So where do we find the, what the Bible says about these festivals? <clears throat> Leviticus tells us all about these festivals and outlines the festivals. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. We mentioned this last week. The word here in Hebrew for assemblies means rehearsal, which is really what they were doing. They were repeating some of the historical events and experiences that the Israelites have had. For example, what is Sabbath? It's rehearsal of God's resting on the seventh day after creation. What is Passover? A rehearsal of the events in Egypt and a meal eaten and the blood put on the doorpost. What is Tabernacles? It's a rehearsal of leaving Egypt and wandering in the desert. So these feasts, these festivals, were rehearsals. They were reminders. So last week we discussed Passover and the importance of that feast as it related to Jesus. Today, because last Sunday was Easter and this Easter week, <clears throat> we focused on Jesus' sacrifice and resurrection. So today, I want to look close, more closely at the last Passover, the last days of Jesus before his death on the cross. And hopefully we'll understand more fully what happened the last week of Jesus' life. This time interests me from a historical perspective. It's also interesting to see what the Bible says about the last week of Jesus. When we study and understand what happened, I think each of us will begin to have a feeling of thankfulness, a feeling of appreciation, and also a feeling of sorrow for what our Lord went through during his final week. This Passover, this last time, was a special time because as Jesus ate the Passover with his disciples, he also revealed to them that this Passover meal was about himself. Jesus instituted a new way of celebrating the feast by remembering him, his body, and his blood, which he would sacrifice. So you, do you remember what the Passover celebration was about? The Jewish people celebrated Passover as a commemoration of their liberation by God from the slavery in Egypt and their freedom as a nation under the leadership of Moses. It celebrated the night the Lord struck down the firstborn of the Egyptians. It celebrated the deliverance from death by putting the blood on the doorposts. So as we mentioned last week, Passover was on the 14th day of the new month of Nisan. Leviticus 23, 5 and 6 say this, These are the Lord's appointed festivals, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins, begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. So to understand all this, as we look at the last week of Jesus, we need to understand the difference between our day and a Jewish day. 
what's the difference between our day and a Jewish day? Well, our day starts when? Our day starts at midnight, right? Midnight to noon and then back to midnight again. So 12 a.m. back to 12 p.m. Well, a Jewish day is different. This is a Jewish day. It looks a little confusing. <laughs> it is confusing. A Jewish day starts at 6 p.m. in the evening. And then the, that's when the day begins and goes to 6 a.m. in the morning, which starts the day. So after 6 p.m. that next day begins the, the day after. So to understand the last week of Jesus, we really need to understand how the Jewish day was structured. Now, why did they begin their days like this? Why did they begin their day in the evening and then the morning came after? It's opposite of what we do. We can find out from Genesis. Genesis 1, 1 through 3. All of us should be somewhat familiar with this verse. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning the first day. So, why did the Jews' day start in the evening? What did God say? God said there was evening and there was morning the first day. So, evening started at 6 p.m. So this can get a bit confusing for us as we look at the Jewish day and the Jewish calendar because if we went by this method, Sunday started, our Sunday started, last night at 6 p.m. on Saturday. And we'll end today at 6 p.m. when Monday will start. So for us, it might be a little hard to get our mind around all of this. So as we look at the last week of Jesus, we want to go through the events we find written in the Bible. We will begin by primarily reading through the book of Mark. Please follow along with me if you'd like. I won't be having all the scriptures up on the board behind me, but I will read them. And this is where we want to start in the final week of Jesus. Some call this the Passion Week. Mark 4.1 Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and to kill him. So it's near the Passover, two days away. And being a devout Jew, Jesus would have been there because the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the day after Passover, was what? Remember? A pilgrim feast. A feast he was to travel to Jerusalem to celebrate. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law wanted to kill Jesus. Why? Jesus was a threat to them. He challenged them. He cleansed the temple of the money changers. He embarrassed them. He threatened their livelihood, their power in the community. So if we look at this week, this Passion Week, we're looking at the days as I outlined just a moment ago. Two days before Passover is Wednesday. Passover begins when? 6 p.m. Passover begins 6 p.m. on Friday. I'm going the wrong way. Passover begins 6 p.m. on Friday. So two days before, there's Thursday, here's Wednesday, two days before What is Jesus doing? He's in Bethany, two miles away. Mark 14, 3. 
While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. At this event, he rebukes the onlookers and foretells his death. He foretells his death. Uh, she broke the jar and poured it on his head in preparation for his burial. Mark 14, 6 through 8. Why are you pouring, why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she said she did what she could. She poured perfume on my body be- beforehand to prepare for my burial. What other things are happening at this time that plays into the life of Jesus? Two days before Passover, Wednesday, Judas betrays Jesus. Mark 14.10. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money, so he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. The next day. On the first day of, unleavened, uh, on the, first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lambs, Jesus asked him, Where do you want to, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So this is a curious verse for us. Because we know Passover was on, what, the 14th day of Nisan. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread started on the 15th day of Nisan. Since the Jews often call these two festivals together, we can understand that the first day of Unleavened Bread would be the Passover. So Thursday, the day on which is the day before Passover, Jesus sends his disciples to prepare a place for Passover. Continuing on in Mark 14, 12 through 15. So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house, he enters The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Make preparations there. So the day before Passover, the day before Passover, Jesus sends his disciples to make preparation. We discussed last week that the Passover was a one-day feast following the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was a seven-day feast Although these are two separate feasts, once again, I mentioned, the the Jews mixed them together as was done in this passage. So go back to our week. We can look and see when Jesus asked his disciples to find a place was Thursday, the day before Passover, which began, what time? 6 p.m. Friday night. Mark 14, 16 to 17. The disciples left and went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table, eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, he who is eating with me. The time, 7 p.m., At the Passover meal, Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. This Lord's Supper, he's telling them, is about me. Mark 14, 22 through 24. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant 
which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Mark 14.26 Then they sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Time, 9 p.m., 14th day of Nisan, Passover. They were in Gethsemane. Mark 14, 32 through 34. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. 9 p.m. on Passover. Eleven PM on Passover. Going a little further, he fell down on the ground and prayed that if possible this hour might pass from him. Abba Father, he said, Everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Mark fourteen, thirty five and thirty six. Midnight on Passover, Jesus is betrayed. Mark 14, 43 through 47. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared with him. And there was a crowd with armed swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Midnight on Passover. They take Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Mark 14, 53 through 55. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself by the fire. Verse 55, the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Time, 2 a.m. on the Passover. Jesus is condemned and beaten. Mark 14:63. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do you need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some, be some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists. They said, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. 5 a.m., Jesus condemned and delivered to Pilate. Mark 15, verse 1 through 5. Barely early morning, the chief priests with the elders and the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Are you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Time, 8 a.m., day of Passover, 14th day of Nisan. Pilate offers to release Jesus or Barabbas. Mark 15, 9 through 14. Do you want me to release you, the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then? 
with the one you call King of the Jews, Pilate asked. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate, but they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. Time, 9 a.m. on the day of Passover. Jesus is crucified. Mark 15, 23 through 25. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour, 9 a.m. in the morning, when they crucified him. 9 a.m. on Passover. The sixth hour, noon, Mark 15.33. At the sixth hour, noon, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those near him heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with wine, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes down to take him. If Elijah comes to take him down, he said. And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. So... his words 
John 20, 15 through 18. At this, she, at this, Mary turned and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where they have put him. I will get him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that she had, what she had said, to the, said these things to her. So once again, let's look at our calendar. Jesus was buried before 6 p.m. on Friday, and the Sabbath begins. The women went to the tomb early Sunday morning. Jesus was buried and in the de- ground three days, Friday night, Saturday night, and raised on the third day, Sunday morning. So we can see the last week of Jesus, that he ate with his disciples the evening of the Passover, Friday night went to the garden to pray and was betrayed, taken to the Sanhedrin early in the morning on Friday. He was crucified at 9 a.m. on Friday and at noon darkness covered the land until his death at 3 p.m. He was then buried before the Sabbath. He was in the tomb Friday, Saturday, and rose the third day, Sunday morning. So this morning in class, we've chronicled the last days of Jesus. From the time he arrived in Jerusalem on the colt with the crowd praising him, Hosanna in the highest, to Sunday morning when the women arrived at the tomb and Jesus was raised from the dead. During this time, Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper on Passover. He prays to God to take this cup from him in the garden on Friday night. He is arrested and beaten. He is crucified at 9 a.m. On Passover, the priests blow the shofar to announce the sacrificial lamb has been sacrificed for the sins of the people. Jesus, our sacrificial lamb, dies on the cross for the sins of the world. He's buried and raised to life early Sunday morning. Our Savior, our Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God. Do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Let's bow in prayer. Our most gracious God and Father, we're so thankful for this day, another Lord's Day, that we can come and study more about your will for us, understand, try to understand more the words that the scriptures have said about your son and his life. We're so thankful for Jesus and his life, especially the last week and the sacrifice he made for us on the cross. Bless us today as we go through this worship and through our communion service when we, when we remember back to the time that Jesus sacrificed his life and was risen for our our welfare. Bless us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed.